Welcome. In this VNA PowerCal video, I'm going to show you how you can use any Ladybug power sensor on a Copper Mountain Technologies VNA to perform a power calibration. I'm also going to show you a few of the ways that a power calibration can improve your measurement. You can run a power cal on either or both ports. For this demonstration, I'm only making a one port measurement. Now all of our calibrations, including the power cal and the port cal, will be done at the end of the cable after all the adapters, uh, so their effect is taken into account. Uh, now we want to run the power cal first because it will affect the port calibration. Now let's take a quick look at a few examples where a power cal can help you make a better measurement. First, a two-port gain characterization where you're, you're talking about measuring gain over frequency of an amplifier and the amplifier might even enter compression at certain power levels. The power cal can give you a very accurate level and help you make the best measurement possible. For a one port example, if you're measuring the reflection coefficient of any device that has an active component that's sensitive to power levels on the input, knowing the applied power level can be very, very critical. You might also be performing some testing where your customer or regulatory agency requires traceability to NIST or um, certification of some sort or another that's provided with power sensors. This can be very handy in a report and may be required in some instances. Now let's get started. The VNA is a Copper Mountain M5090. It's turned on and stable. Now we'll start the software and I'll set it to full screen so we can see the um, details better. I'm going to start this demonstration uh, by setting the stimulus power. That's the power the VNA applies to the DUT. Uh, when it's making the measurement. Now that's under the stimulus menu uh, and then you'll select power uh, and the um, power menu will then pop up and uh, you can see that it's uh, not at its default level. I've been playing with it a little bit. We're going to set it here to 1.25 dBm for our measurement. Next we're going to need to set up the power meter. This VNA will accept several different power meters so we'll go to the systems menu a miscellaneous setup, and then power meter settings. You may notice at the top of the list that Ladybug LB59XX has already been selected. This is because I've been working on this demonstration with a Ladybug LB5900 series power sensor. You could also use any of our other sensors uh, by selecting either the LB59XX driver or the LBXXX driver. Now that the sensor has been selected, we can check the communication with the sensor and make sure it's working correctly by clicking the check connection button. The system reports that the power sensor connection is OK and that it's an LB5940A power sensor. This is a 1 megahertz to 40 gigahertz power sensor. You'll need to select a power sensor that covers your frequencies of interest and then review the VNA's frequency span. Next, we'll navigate to the calibration menu, then power calibration, and our power cal menu will show up on the right side of the screen. Here is the power calibration menu. The first item is port selection. It's already set for port one. That's what we're using. We don't need to change that. I am going to turn off correction. Correction will be turned back on automatically after a successful cal sweep. The next item is loss compensation. These are frequency dependent offset tables. We're not going to be using any of those. You can read about them in the manual if you'd like to. Okay, let's skip to the bottom item in the menu, power sensor zero correction. Ladybug sensors utilize a patented no zero no cal process and user zeroing before use is unnecessary. I'm going to uh, select the Take Cal Sweep button and get the process started now. This is a fairly long process. There are many, many, many points and the accuracy level is high so the averaging is pretty high on the power sensor to get the uh, required accuracy. It's going to take um, quite a few minutes so I have sped the video up uh, and dubbed my audio onto it so that you can see the uh, process occurring. The chime indicates that the cow sweep is complete and notice that the correction has been turned back on automatically for us. Now that the power cow is complete, you can run a open load and short calibration on the port. Thank you for watching this video.